with its imposing delta wings spanning over a hundred feet, merged seamlessly with a streamlined fuselage into a sleek and daunting celestial arrow, the XB-70 Valkyrie, a 243-ton, 196-foot-long superbomber, was decades ahead of its time in the 1950s when it was brought to life by North American Aviation. The Valkyrie's wingtips, ingeniously designed to fold downwards in flight, lent it a predatory grace, and it was meant to be a predator, a supersonic nuclear-armed harbinger of destruction. It was designed to glide across continents to the very heart of Moscow and rain down atomic annihilation, soaring at Mach 3 with an operational ceiling that broke into the stratosphere at 77,350 feet, the Valkyrie was untouchable. No enemy plane or defensive system could intercept it at such speeds and altitudes. In the grip of the Cold War, it stood as the ultimate trump card, an unassailable warplane. But creating such epic aviation engineering soon spiraled into a labyrinth of challenges. Technical nightmares, exploding budgets, and a relentless Soviet Union hell-bent on outpacing the United States at every turn. As the Valkyrie stepped up to claim its destiny, however, the Soviets unveiled an unforeseen and revolutionary countermeasure that threatened to turn the entire program upside down. In the early 1950s, the U.S. had a rather unconventional problem. It had a growing arsenal of nuclear bombs, the most powerful weapon known to man, but it had no reliable way to deliver it all the way to Soviet Russia if the rivalry between both superpowers escalated into an all-out war. At the time, nuclear weapons could weigh several tons, and the need to take enough fuel to fly that payload from the continental United States to the Soviet Union demanded incredibly massive bombers. In 1955, the Air Force issued General Operational Requirement No. 38 for a new bomber to solve this issue, combining the payload and intercontinental range of the B-52 with the Mach 2 top speed of the Convair B-58 Hustler. The U.S. Air Force's Air Research and Development Command, or ARDC, was seeking a bomber that could maintain a cruising speed close to the speed of sound and reach the highest possible speed for short bursts during a 1,000 nautical mile approach and departure from its target. Like a long-distance runner who maintains a steady pace but can sprint when needed, the bomber was required to rush into and from its target. Additionally, the bomber was required to carry a massive payload of 50,000 pounds, the weight of six elephants, and have a staggering combat radius of 4,000 nautical miles, roughly the distance from New York to Rome. This combination of speed, payload, and range was unprecedented. As these specifications were drawn up, the realm of supersonic propulsion was undergoing revolutionary advancements. North American aviation was at the forefront, poised to not just meet, but shatter these lofty Air Force expectations. In their quest for superiority, North American aviation delved deep into every scrap of aeronautical research. This led them to a little-known 1956 treatise by a pair of National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics Wind Tunnel Savants titled Aircraft Configurations Developing High Lift Drag Ratios at High Supersonic Speeds. Today we recognize this concept as compression lift, harnessing the shock wave emanating from the aircraft's nose or other acute angles to generate a pressurized airstream. By astutely aligning the wings with this shock wave, the aircraft could capture the shock's intense pressure underneath the wings, creating extra lift and rewriting the rules of supersonic flight. The result would become the XB-70 Valkyrie, the prototype version of the requested B-70 supersonic bomber aircraft designed to serve as a deep penetration strategic bomber armed with a nuclear arsenal. More significantly, it would be faster than Mach 3, over three times faster than regular bomber aircraft. As if that were not enough, North American engineers once toyed with transforming the Valkyrie into the world's inaugural nuclear-powered warplane. This idea emerged shortly after the United States Air Force requisitioned the aircraft. The engineers didn't just draft plans for a conventional version powered by afterburning turbojet engines. They delved into nuclear propulsion. These nuclear ambitions materialized as the Weapon System 125A, a designation that marked a serious foray into atomic-powered flight. 
the XB-70 Valkyrie was on the cusp of entering this uncharted territory. The engineering teams harnessed the General Electric J-47 turbojet engine to craft two nuclear aircraft engine prototypes. Pushing the envelope, they managed to fire up these engines to near full thrust using dual shielded reactors in a groundbreaking test of ingenuity. However, this initial triumph soon collided with harsh realities. The staggering cost of developing a nuclear-powered aircraft became apparent, casting a shadow over the project. Moreover, the inherent risks of airborne nuclear reactors, a Pandora's box of safety concerns loomed large. Faced with these daunting challenges, the nuclear-powered aircraft concept, including the Valkyrie's atomic variant, was grounded. Yet the echoes of this venture linger. The nuclear engine prototypes HTRE-2 and HTRE-3 stand as tangible relics of this ambitious era. No longer shrouded in secrecy, they now bear silent testimony to a bold vision at the Idaho National Laboratory, accessible to the public and history enthusiasts alike. The North American XB-70 Valkyrie, though it never realized the ambition of becoming the first nuclear-powered warplane, stood as the zenith of modern engineering within the aerospace industry. This awe-inspiring aircraft pushed the boundaries of aeronautical design and functionality, even in its conventionally fueled version. One of the Valkyrie's most distinctive features was its delta wing, seamlessly integrated into a slab-sided fuselage that housed its six powerful jet engines. The Valkyrie's wings were engineered with a pioneering spirit. The outer panels of these wings were hinged, a design choice that significantly enhanced the aircraft's performance across different flight conditions. During takeoff, landing, and when flying at subsonic speeds, these wing panels would remain horizontal, augmenting the lift generated by the wings and thereby improving the lift-to-drag ratio. A dramatic transformation occurred in supersonic flight. The wing panels would hinge downward. This adjustment mitigated the drag typically caused by the wingtips interacting with the inlet shock wave, optimizing the aircraft's performance at high velocities. The Valkyrie's cockpit was the epitome of innovation and sophistication, designed with a unique outer windshield and ramp mechanism to maximize pilot visibility. A critical factor during low-speed, nose-high flight and ground operations. This mechanism allowed for a two-mode operation. When lowered, the ramp enabled the pilot to peer through the fixed cockpit windshield, a feature indispensable for takeoffs, landings, and low-speed maneuvers. Conversely, when the ramp was raised for high-speed flight, it seamlessly blended into the aircraft's forebody, streamlining its shape and thus bolstering its aerodynamic efficiency at blistering speeds. Additionally, the Valkyrie addressed the challenges of rain removal and windshield anti-ice by utilizing hot bleed air from the engines, heated to around 600 degrees Fahrenheit. This system ensured clear visibility and safety in various weather conditions. The General Electric YJ-93 GE-3 turbojet engine used in the XB-70 Valkyrie bomber was a notable example of advanced aero engineering from its era. This engine was distinctive for its high-pressure, variable-stator design, which allowed it to operate efficiently at high speeds and altitudes. It could reach speeds up to 2,000 miles per hour and fly at altitudes around 70,000 feet. The engine's performance characteristics included a maximum thrust of 30,000 pounds with an afterburner and 22,000 pounds without an afterburner. It also featured an 11-stage axial flow compressor with variable stators and a two-stage axial turbine, contributing to its impressive thrust-to-weight ratio above 5 to 1. This high thrust-to-weight ratio means the engine could deliver over five times more thrust than the weight of the aircraft, ensuring exceptional acceleration and agility. The YJ-93 GE-3 was explicitly designed to run on JP-6 fuel, a special high-temperature jet fuel developed to meet the demanding requirements of high-speed, high-altitude flight. The engine weighed 4,770 pounds, a relatively lightweight design considering its power output and capabilities. This engine played a crucial role in the XB-70's performance, contributing to its ability to cruise at Mach 3.2. In the tense climate of the 1950s Cold War, the North American XB-70 Valkyrie was envisioned as the ultimate strategic weapon. 
Military strategists of the era believed that a bomber capable of achieving such high speeds would be nearly invulnerable to the primary defensive measure of the time, intercepting fighter aircraft. The B-70 Valkyrie's design promised to outpace any incoming threat, effectively vanishing from hostile skies before any danger could draw near. Its ability to soar to an impressive service ceiling of 70,000 feet further enhanced this advantage, as it could operate at altitudes beyond the reach of contemporary enemy fighters. Additionally, the Air Force anticipated that the Valkyrie's high-speed capabilities would enable it to swiftly escape the blast radius of the nuclear payloads it was designed to deploy. Even without incorporating stealth technology into its design, the B-70 posed a formidable challenge for enemy radar systems. Its blistering speed meant it would appear on radar screens only briefly, significantly limiting the time window for an enemy response. Sometimes the bomber might not even register on radar, depending on specific conditions. But suddenly everything came crashing down. The initial promise of the XB-70 Valkyrie, conceived in an era where intercepting fighter aircraft and anti-aircraft artillery were the primary defenses against bombers, began to unravel with the advent of new military technology. While anti-aircraft guns had limited effectiveness and fighter aircraft increasingly struggled to keep pace with advanced bombers, a new threat emerged that would drastically alter the strategic landscape the advent of Soviet surface-to-air missiles, notably the SA-2 guideline. This new missile technology raised severe doubts about the XB-70's ability to evade such advanced defenses, directly challenging its primary strategic role. The Valkyrie's impressive Mach 3 speed, once considered its shield against interception, no longer guaranteed its survivability in the face of these potent weapons. In response to this heightened threat, the United States Air Force adapted by flying missions at lower altitudes, where it was more difficult for enemy radar to detect and track the aircraft. However, this tactical adjustment came at a significant cost to the XB-70's effectiveness. At lower altitudes, the Valkyrie's performance advantages diminished, rendering it less effective than the B-52 Stratofortress, the very bomber it intended to surpass. Additionally, operating at lower altitudes adversely affected the aircraft's range and fuel efficiency. Compounding the XB-70's challenges was the development of Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs, in the late 1950s. The Valkyrie had been specifically designed to deliver heavy nuclear payloads, a role now increasingly being fulfilled by these ICBMs. The rapid advancement in missile technology not only threatened the Valkyrie's strategic role, but also called into question the necessity of such a bomber in the evolving context of nuclear warfare. The emergence of intercontinental ballistic missiles dealt a further blow to the XB-70 Valkyrie program. During the Valkyrie's development, significant strides were made in missile technology. These missiles presented a more cost-effective and reliable alternative for delivering nuclear payloads. This technological shift began to render the concept of a high-speed, long-range bomber like the XB-70 increasingly redundant, especially in the face of the strategic and economic advantages offered by ICBMs. The new tendencies became evident in the decision of the Kennedy administration to discontinue plans for deploying the B-70 bomber in an operational capacity. However, the story of the Valkyrie was not yet over. Even though the XB-70 Valkyrie program was officially cancelled, two prototypes were constructed not for combat but for experimental purposes. These prototypes became crucial in testing the aerodynamics, propulsion, and other characteristics vital to understanding sizable supersonic aircraft. Coinciding with the program's cancellation was a burgeoning interest in supersonic transport, or SST, within the American commercial aviation industry. The XB-70 Valkyrie, with its advanced design and features, emerged as an ideal platform for SST research. Its size was comparable to the projected designs, utilizing similar structural materials, such as brazed stainless steel honeycomb and titanium. This alignment of features transformed the XB-70A from a prototype of a manned bomber into one of the most significant research aircraft of its time. The first XB-70 took to the skies in September 1964. It achieved the milestone of Mach 3 flight in October 1965, showcasing its incredible capabilities. 
The second prototype followed, making its first flight in July 1965. But just as the XB-70 Valkyrie was beginning to carve out a new role for itself in aviation history, a catastrophic incident on June 8, 1966, cast a shadow over its legacy. The tragedy occurred during a promotional photo shoot organized by General Electric, the aircraft engine manufacturer. XB-70, a number two, was part of a formation that included an F-4, F-5, T-38, and an F-104. In the aftermath of the photo session, the F-104, piloted by NASA's chief test pilot Joe Walker, inadvertently drifted into contact with the XB-70's right wing. The F-104 flipped over and collided with the Valkyrie in an inverted roll. It struck the XB-70's vertical stabilizers and left wing before exploding. This catastrophic collision wreaked havoc on the Valkyrie. It lost its rudders and sustained significant damage to its left wing, leading to an uncontrollable spin that culminated in a crash near Barstow, California. The accident claimed the lives of Joe Walker and Carl Cross, the XB-70's co-pilot. Al White, the pilot of the XB-70, managed to eject but suffered severe injuries. This incident, heart-wrenching in its own right, combined with the evolving strategic priorities in military technology and the rise of missile capabilities, effectively sealed the fate of the XB-70 Valkyrie as an operational aircraft. The remaining XB-70 prototype continued its flights, contributing valuable data for aviation research until it was eventually retired to a museum in 1969. The story of the XB-70 Valkyrie, marked by ambition, innovation, and ultimately tragedy, remains a bittersweet chapter in the annals of aviation history.